Morning Drive, brought to you by Golf Pride. Good morning, guys, and welcome to Morning Drive on a Friday. Anna White, you with you alongside Damon Hatt, Paige McKenzie, and Robert Damron. Well, news broke on Thursday regarding the resumption of play on the PGA Tour. The Tour had previously targeted the Charles Schwab Challenge on the week of May 18th as the restart of the season. But in a press release this morning, they've announced that they, that they will be delaying that timeline three weeks to resume play the week of June 8th at that same event at Colonial Country Club. With the news, several PGA pros and fellow Ryder Cup teammates have weighed in on what's ahead i think it's a uh, plenty of time looking forward um i think jay monahan and the staff at the pj tour have done an amazing job and obviously the sponsors around the the country around the world that uh, that um are, are dealing with with their own crisis but also trying to get um their their stuff on the pga tour um you know i applaud them as well and um I mean, this is something that we don't know what's going to happen, but I, I like the initiative to, to go ahead and set the schedule and try to get us all geared up. Me getting back to playing golf and practicing um, and getting ready for this. Um, I'm looking forward to it. You know, we miss the game of golf. We miss uh, providing for the fans. And um, this is something we're looking forward to in a few weeks. I think um, we still have eight weeks till uh, Colonial plays if we play it. So. Um, I think they're going to, I'm hoping they'll have plenty of tests. I'm sure they're going to make sure all protocols and everything's, you know, checked off. Uh, but I've talked to several, you know, in the sporting world, uh, Brad Alberts, president of the Dallas Stars, we had a conversation planning last week and he said, there's no reason why your tour, you guys shouldn't start up first. Uh, you're outdoors. Uh, you can kind of keep yourself separated amongst the golf course. Um, obviously we're going to start with no fans, which will be, uh, another, you know, safe environment, I guess you could say, but, um, uh, you know, being in June, unless things turn for the worse in the next three, two, three weeks, I won't have any issues at all or be worried about the safety of, of being on the golf course. As long as we have the necessary, you know, testing to be done. I mean, I'm sure they're going to have all players, caddies, tour staff. I'm sure media, I would assume they're going to make sure everybody's been tested, quarantined if possible. So, uh, I have no doubt the the tour is going to do a great job in preparing us for that for that date. Well, we'll hear from both Bubba and Ryan a little bit later on their endeavours to help those in need during this COVID-19 pandemic. But Robert, I'm going to come to you first on this because this is a time where we're looking for new normalcies. Uh, everyone is having to adjust. And we've heard it there from the PGA Tour. The first of four events back will be played without any fans. Uh, what's your take on this? Well, I understand the Tour wants to be ambitious and set a time, but they're being cautiously ambitious. That's a smart thing to do. You've you've got the first four tournaments in Fort Worth, Hilton Head, Hartford, Detroit, all with different levels of the problem right now, all uh, not knowing if we could even get the, the businesses ready to, to, to set up the structures in each of those areas to, to kind of keep a gallery and fans. So they're doing as best they can. The, the bad side of it is if you're a player and you've trained all your life uh, outside of the huge check, and and uh, the the self realization of your hard work, the greatest thing about winning is that moment of electricity. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine, Russ Cockrell, who won once, told me his biggest regret was he never won again because now he knew what to expect when that putt went in on 18, and he wanted to soak that feeling in. Uh, I understand that. I feel the same way. But that's you know, new normal is just a term we're going to have to use uh, for the for the short time being. And you're right, Robert, the, the tone and the feeling, uh, even watching the event is going to feel very different uh, to not have, you know, the crowd noise along with it. Uh, so even those of us that will be watching it on television, it's going to have a different feel. It's going to feel flat. It's also going to have a different look. Uh, if you're used to seeing, you know, the ropes and people lined up on the ropes, that's not going to happen. There's not going to be any of the bleachers around the greens. So I think for that reason, it's definitely going to not only look different, feel different, uh, it's just going to be very, very different for these players. You know, Paige, I spoke to a doctor last night in the state of Florida, a high-ranking Florida a health official. One of his questions were, was how will the players react as independent contractors in terms of the protocols that the PGA Tour may or may not put in place? It's a lot easier to control a, a baseball team that may all be staying in the same hotel. Will, will all the players 
you know, on the golf course, be staying in the same place, eating in the same place? Will they submit perhaps to testing? How do you control where the caddies are coming from? What parts of the country? Are they coming from a part of the country where there's not much COVID-19 or there's a lot? So I'm curious to see just how it all unfolds. What players will decide to play? What players will decide to sit back and watch and kind of wait to see if it's going to, quote, safe to go back in the water, if I can use an old phrase from the 1970s. I think there's still a lot of unknowns, even as we have this, you know, potential schedule. It's still, to me, it's very, very temporary. It's preliminary. Of course, you want to have some placeholders there in case everything continues to trend in a good direction. But I still think one of the challenges the tour has is they're dealing with independent contractors a lot more difficult to control than maybe a, a baseball or a football team. Yeah, no exactly doubt. Right. It is a very one, ambitious schedule. That was one of the first things I thought of, Damon, uh, was exactly how are these players going to respond to if they institute any sort of testing, if they're asymptomatic and they want to go play. I mean, all of these players are used to playing sick and injured. Obviously, I know they're responsible and wouldn't necessarily put other people at risk, but at the same time, that it, you are wading into some pretty muddy waters as it relates to the difference between professional golf and that of other sports where they're actually employees of these respective teams. The PGA Tour has also determined which events will start their 2020-2021 wraparound season, which will begin on September 10th with the Safeway Open. As previously announced, the US Open and the Ryder Cup will follow, but the Tour is now moving the Corrales Punta Cana Resort and Club Championship to September 24th. The month of October will feature the Sanderson Farms Championship, the Shriners Hospitals for Children Open, the CJ Cup at Nine Bridges, the Zozo Championship and the WGC HSBC Champions. And moving into November, the Houston Open will begin the month and lead into the Masters the following week. After the Masters, a player will head into Sea Island for the RSM Classic on November 19th. And finally, December will begin with the Mayakoba Golf Classic, which is played opposite the Hero World Challenge, the unofficial event hosted by Tiger Woods. Also of note, after 10 years, a military tribute at the Greenbrier Classic has been taken off the schedule. Damon Hack. All right, Anna, the PGA Tour's Chief Tournaments and Competitions Officer, Andy Pazder, had this to say about the changes to begin next season. Quote, this portion of our 2020-21 schedule is possible only because of the many partners who have worked tirelessly to grow their events and impact the lives of those in need in their respective communities and our players who have embraced the expanded fall schedule in recent years. We'd like to express our appreciation to the leadership of the Safeway Open, Houston Open, and Mayacoba Golf Classic, which will conclude our calendar year schedule in Riviera Maya, Mexico, for their flexibility, which allowed for the U.S. Open and Masters Tournament to be played in the fall. Anna? So guys, a lot to unpack here as we look at the rest of the schedule throughout the remainder of 2020. Uh, but Paige McKenzie, looking at this new schedule, uh, which event intrigues you the most now? It, to me, it's the Houston Open. Both of you kind of highlighted it as we went through the schedule. And the reason I'm intrigued by it is because it has had to have some flexibility over the last couple of years. With the restructuring of the PGA Tour schedule last year, it was moved from the spring of 18 all the way to the fall of 2019. Uh, it had previously sat the week prior to the Masters, had kind of that lead-in feel. They were known for shaving the, around the greens to get players prepared for the, the first major championship of the season. Well, interestingly, now in uh, the 2020 fall, it'll actually become the lead-in event to the Masters once again um, because of the relocation of the Masters tournament. So uh, I'm kind of intrigued at how they're going to handle that. I'm also kind of happy that they're rewarded with the placement of that in the schedule. Uh, it, it's funny you mentioned Houston last season, one of the weaker fields uh, on the schedule. Next season, not going to be so much, like you said, leading in the Masters. That's why I'm looking at the John Deere Classic. John, we used to call John Deere Classic the Jurassic Classic because the field was so weak, all the old guys uh, got to come back and play that one week. People you get, never see anymore, <laughs> you get to say hi to them. Uh, also, this tournament's going to be the first one back, theoretically, with fans. The first four tournaments, no fans. And then John Deere 
we'll be the first one with fans. Everybody will be starved to get out there. Hopefully it works out that way. But yeah, the, the field is going to be stronger than they've ever had it. I think they're all going to be impressed with this TPC deer run. DA Wybring did a great job designing this golf course. It's really a, a gym. And uh, yeah, just seeing, seeing that tournament that's got such a, a long run on the PGA tour, get, the, get a great field theoretically, hopefully it is a great thing. Plus I do think, I think they're going to be a little surprised. Uh, you know, Moline, Illinois in the middle of July is pretty steamy. So they might not like that. It's hot. The Jurassic Classic, Robert Dameron. I love that. I mean, my eyes right now are struggling to look any further than June 8th at the Charles Schwab Challenge. Uh, hopefully it will be a beacon of light coming towards the end of a tunnel of crisis that we've been experiencing over the last few months. But it's going to be so interesting to see which players have benefited from this time away working on their swing. I know Matt Wallace is grateful uh, to be working on his swing, not happy with his performances. And then those players also who may have dropped in form, having been on a hot run peaking towards the Masters, there will be so many questions uh, to be asking these players as we go through that week. Uh, so, Damon Hack, I'm really looking forward to getting some answers to what's been a, a crazy time. Uh, me too, Anna. I'm looking at the Memorial Tournament. In fact, I spoke to Jack Nicholas II this past week. They're taking over the old date from the uh, Open Championship, and he mentioned the heat as well. As we know, Jack Nicholas likes to present a very difficult golf course. I imagine the summertime you can get that rough really, really thick, especially if it's been raining. And Jack likes to have a very firm and fast test. I just can't wait to see what it's going to look like come this summer. Yeah, it's great to see that a new schedule has been penciled. It is ambitious, uh, but I know we've all got our fingers crossed to what could be a really prolific end to 2020. And we can't wait until play gets underway again. But stay with us here on Morning Drive. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And don't miss anything this evening by following Golf Central. And take care and we'll see you soon.